Chapter 5 Feelings of anger, panic, helplessness, and hopelessness constantly disturb the two girls in alternation immediately after the homecoming ceremony. Unlike other days, Teo is not ready for her sister's grouse this night. She therefore feigns sleep and doesn't answer when her sister calls her. Thoughts about Joseph and the good feeling he had aroused in her coupled with the fear of the cherished ritual bothered her throughout the night. Teo cries bitterly cursing the barbaric ritual and the archaic way of life. She harbors some anger towards Uncle Samiron whom she blames for ruining her relationship with Joseph Parmuate, the man she had hoped would fill the void in her. She considered a culture that forbids any heterosexual relationship between her and Joseph simply because they share a clan as outdated. On her part, Rizian could not control the tears that ran freely from her eyes. She was in so much pain especially because the threat of circumcision was becoming real. This notion, combined with feeling of loneliness and insecurity caused her so much suffering throughout the night. She remembers the day that the Ankamuritani had visited their home and how she showed them her tools of work and demonstrated how they work. It is the thought of the Amurunya that blade-like tool, which scared her the more. Old Kalo wakes up his wife the next morning reminding her about the demands of the culture that they should have been ushered to. She tells him that they should also put the interest of the family into consideration but when her husband says that the culture comes first she meekly agrees with him. He asks her to start counseling the girls to make them understand their roles as potential wives. He also adds that he would organize for Parmuate, who is a brother to the girls, to find time to teach them a few truths after which they will call the Enkamuritani to play her role before they are given away. Despite the fact that she feels for her daughters, Mama Milanoi cannot bring herself to dissent with her husband especially because the issue involved their culture. The only way out would be through Minikianin Koitoi, the Emakerere. However, knowing how much Emakerere is hated in Nasala, she cannot associate with her. When they get to the living room, they find the room well arranged with Teo busy ferrying breakfast to the table while Rizian is engrossed in a book that she is reading. Ol Kalo reprimands Rizian calling her lazy and ordering her to sit straight like a girl. His hash words send her back to the bedroom. Later the family is taken to the shop which impresses them just like the new home had. It was already full of customers. Rizian keenly observes that it might have cost their father a fortune to stock it and hopes that he will not use that as an excuse not to send them to the university. Joseph Parmuate visits them later in the evening to start coaching the girls as organized by their father. The three Halo women like him from the start. Before they could settle, an unexpected visitor arrives, he was a man they had never seen before. He proceeded to find himself a sit even without waiting to be invited. Thank you guys for tuning in. That's all for today. Make sure to subscribe to the notification icon, like the video, and share it. Peace out. See you.